So the other night I played a few Super Nintendo prototype games. I thought they were pretty good. Let's check them out. Starting with this game called Arcus Spirits. It looks like it's kind of a game in uh, medieval times. And I'm just going around. I think I'm swiping a sword, but it's also like shooting energy bursts out of it too. I don't know what those things in the ground are. And we'll go into the, uh, I guess this is a dungeon or something. There was nothing but a bunch of um, scary looking scorpion things. Ugh, I don't know what that thing is, it just killed me. Alright, let's move on to Barbie Vacation Adventure. Surprisingly, this one I didn't find all that bad. I thought it was kind of good, actually. I mean, you know, for a girls game. It starts out allowing you to change your swimsuit, but I notice um, she has a bikini in one scene, but a one-piece in the other scenes. So for the Florida section, all you do is just collect stars and, you know, shells and stuff like that. And then we're going to go to the Texas section. And we're going to select a horse. And uh, we have to jump over these obstacles here. You have to hold down the button a long time for the jump to complete. And then when it decided to turn around and go back over it again, I thought, well, eh, that's all right. I'll just move on to the next game, which is going to be Batman Revenge of the Joker. I kind of like this game, but the enemies just get too close to you. It's kind of annoying. And I like that you can shoot up. And if you look in the boxes, sometimes you find power-ups. I found this one that has uh, three shots on it. It doesn't seem to kill the bad guys any faster, though. And then this uh, statue, it wouldn't um, allow me to shoot it until I got too close to it. And then when I did that, it hit me with that lightning bolt. And then I died. Alright, let's try Congo the movie. It starts out um, <laughs> by um, murdering a bunch of apes. <laughs> I get the feeling this may be why the game was not uh, released. Oh, and then I just shot that ape in the head. Okay, so now we're on the river collecting diamonds and jumping. I really like the way the, the water looks in the background. It's kind of cool. And the animation of the boat is pretty good. But you gotta be really, really careful because if you touch any one of those little spike things, um, that's it. See right there, I just died. All right, this game is called Falcon and it's a flight simulator by Spectrum Holobyte. It's pretty well known. There really doesn't seem to be a whole lot to it. I was actually surprised that they had any kind of gameplay to it. It started out with just a bunch of um, static screens. Alright, this one's called Firearm. And it's got this weird car thing that it starts out with. But then you get into the game and... Um, I don't know, the graphics I thought looked pretty cool. That jumping sound is really annoying though. And I don't know what the deal is with that little cartoon thing that shows up in the top corner. But I notice there's no enemies here until I get to the end, which as soon as I fall off the side, they all start chasing me down. <laughs> I like that ninja there with his swinging his sword after me. And then after that, I couldn't do anything. This could have been a good game, I guess, if they worked on it a little bit more. Alright, this one's called Fireteam Rogue. And it's got some interesting uh, characters to choose from here at the beginning. And uh, it's got some kind of neat animation with the character when he swings his arm weapon thing.
But I don't know if I'm walking in a cave full of toxic sludge or what the heck's going on here. I like that little swing animation that he does. Ugh, ugh. Too bad there's no enemies for me to use that swing animation on. And I'm just jumping around looking for some guys to fight, but there's really nothing here. Pushing on the wall, that does absolutely nothing. And I just duck down. Alright, let's move on to Metal Jack. This one was seemed pretty complete, but you can choose from three different characters here. I'm just gonna go with Red Jack. And you start out by punching these robots. You just gotta get right up in their face and just punch them. Or if you get the gun, you can start shooting them. This kind of reminds me of a, a Japanese anime uh, cartoon, maybe. Maybe it's based on one, I'm not sure. Just get right up in their face, just punch them. It takes them a second before they attack you, so you might as well just get right up there and knock them out. I think this was the boss, but after I killed him, the game kept going, so... But okay, here we go. Um, now he's hit me with fire and I can't get close enough to him. Fortunately, I had just enough energy to kill him. And then this one random dude just comes out of nowhere and kicks me in the face and ends it. Okay. Next game, uh, Mick and Mac Global Gladiators. This is a Super Nintendo version of the um, NES game. I believe there was a Sega Genesis game too. It's got some really good parallax scrolling in the background. Some nice graphics. The ROM allows you to choose which stage that you want. So I just decided to go with this uh, fourth stage to start with. And then when I fell off, um, it it just allowed me to keep moving, so I kept scrolling through the game. Alright, now this is like a, I don't know, chemical zone or industrial zone, something like that. Just kind of showing off the graphics here. Ah, he falls off and just I can just keep scrolling. Now there's a zipper right there. I think it probably is a teleporter to that other zipper spot. Okay, this one's Mickey's Playtown Adventure. Gosh, I guess I should hang up my clothes. I don't know how to do that. I'm trying to jump up here and maybe grab the clothes so I can take them into the closet, but screw it, I'm just gonna leave. And here we are in the kitchen. Uh, there's some milk bouncing around there. I did find something to do outside. We can pull up all these carrots. Six. Seven. Nine. Some pretty good Mickey voice there. And then we're going to leave Mickey's house, go down the street a little bit, and we're going to find uh, Minnie's house. Here we are in Minnie's house. Hello, Mickey. Thanks for coming over. Would you like to play some hide and seek? Sure, Minnie. What, um, what kind of hide and seek are you thinking about playing? Five. She's hiding right behind the couch. All right, now she wants me to help her make a cake, I guess, or cookies or something, I don't know. So I'll open up this cabinet here and I guess I found some flour. Hopefully it's not rat poison. I'm bringing it over to her now. I was like, how do I, how do I put it in the bowl? What am I supposed to do with this now? Yeah, I know, that's the thing flashing there. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I just don't know what to do. Okay, this one's called Mr. Bloopy. He's kind of got some weird controls. I didn't know what to do here at first, but you got to shoot these blocks to match that same pattern there on the left. And once you do that, you can move on to the next part. And um, where am I supposed to go here? There's a bunch of holes for me to accidentally fall into, so I went down there. And I think you're supposed to match that character or something, but I didn't know what to do. I'm trying to put out this fire, I thought maybe I could put it out with you know, spitting on it or something, but that doesn't seem to work. And then this elevator I thought it might go up or something, but it didn't, um, didn't seem to want to do anything. Alright, this one's called Power Drive, which is kind of the same game that's on the Jaguar called Power Drive Rally, which I played a lot of. That was a fun game. 
but it starts you out with like the uh, the training course. I just wanted to get into a race, but I couldn't find uh, how to do that, so I just kept playing the training course. Um, don't hit the walls because it's very hard to um, turn around. I like that little loop de loop there, though. See, like right here, I get stuck against the wall, and I was trying to back up, and I couldn't quite figure it out, so I gave up. Moving on to a game called Rally. This one really surprised me. I thought this was going to be another top down racer, but instead, you're in the car. This is really cool. I think the graphics are good, but the controls are extremely slippery. Would be nice if you had a co-pilot explaining, you know, turn left, turn right, hard right, hard left. That's kind of typical in uh, rally racers. Okay, here we go. It's Rayman for the Super Nintendo. I had no idea they were going to make this game for the Super Nintendo. It's pretty basic. There's just this one stage and he just kind of walks around. There's no enemies to attack or anything. I really like this part where you walk into this yellow section and there's a bit of transparency there. I thought that was kind of cool. All right, here's a game called Shadow Hawk. Makes me think of uh, some kind of uh, comic book cartoon character. The punching's pretty satisfying, but I don't know what I was doing there. Maybe I was trying to jump up. It's kind of tricky to jump up there and, and uh, grab the ceiling. You kind of have to jump and push up at the same time. In this case, I'm just jumping up on the uh, window sills there. And then I tried to jump up here, but for some reason I couldn't, couldn't make it. And then I just fell. It's not a bad game, but um, a lot of guys around there punching you. Okay, this is just kind of a game called Shooter. It's pretty basic. No sound, but I'm attacking uh, grasshoppers, I guess, in space. Space grasshoppers. Space hoppers, there you go. I wish there was some sound that would make it a little more interesting. The graphics are good, but kind of a little bland. Okay, here's Spot Goes to Hollywood. This kind of surprised me, too, that I thought this would be a um, side-scroller, but instead it's an isometric view game. It's very challenging trying to figure out how to move Spot on an isometric. You'd think you would hit diagonally, but no, you just push up to go diagonally, or down to go right diagonally. It's very confusing with the controls. And then I got to this stage here in the jungle, which obviously is a place for, you know, digging up X marks a spot, but I couldn't figure out how to do anything here. Maybe I have to find a key to get through that door. Alright, this may be my favorite one. This is uh, Steven Seagal in the final option. And um, this game just cracks me up. I love the way he just attacks. It's like this Mr. Furley kind of karate chop that he does. <laughs> I mean, the digitized graphics are not bad, but there's no way to get past this door, so I just fall off and then I can, like, teleport wherever I want after that. The music makes it sound so exciting, but <laughs> this game is just <laughs> hilariously bad. Why am I punching a scientist here? He was tougher than the other guys. I take that in the face. Uh, mm, ah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't fall in the water. Oh, Steven Seagal falls in the water, but not the bad guy. Okay. Jumping is kind of challenging, too. You just got to get time it just right. This is by far the best game <laughs> that I played. <laughs> okay, here's Super Shadow of the Beast. This is a pretty well-known uh, Amiga, Atari ST, Genesis game. There's also a game for the Atari Lynx. And basically you just move left to right and shoot stuff, I think. 
I've never really gotten into this game too much, but um, the graphics are amazing in almost every version. Alright, here's a game called Spellcraft. You start out here at the... Um, looks like Stonehenge? But you'll see in a second we'll go to Stonehenge, the real Stonehenge. I find that interesting that that girl's wearing the you know, tank top here in a wizardry game. Okay, so here's like the real Stonehenge, I think. And I'm just kind of wandering the countryside. And there's bad guys chasing me and I tried to attack them, but I couldn't do anything. All right, here's Sylvester and Tweety. I thought the animation was really awesome in this game. There's no sound. Oh, there's Grandma. Granny, I guess. And if you run really fast, and I think if you hold up, you can go up the stairs. But after that, I'm not sure what to do. Okay, here's a game called Turbo Tunes. And it seems like uh, it's just a top-down racing game, kind of like Super Sprint or um, Off-Road or something like that. But you're playing as um, Hanna-Barbera characters. I'm playing as uh, Huckleberry Hound here. And you just kind of run around and uh, try to win the race. I can see why this game was not released. It just doesn't seem like a fun premise for a game. Okay, here's Universal Soldier, which is, I think, pretty well known as a Turrican ripoff or clone or reskin, maybe. And uh, it's pretty tough. These guys just come attack you from all directions, and you can't get very far. I mean, the graphics are pretty good. There's some parallax scrolling in the background. The music is um, not pleasant, I don't think. Oh, I got a power up there and I'm being attacked by bees. Here's our final game called Virtual Soccer. I thought this would be more like a 3D view, but apparently it's just like your regular soccer game. This could have been released. I mean, it, it seems pretty decent if it was finished. It's fast. Um, the graphics are pretty decent for a soccer game. Uh, maybe they just decided that there was too many soccer games already for the Super Nintendo. I was trying to let the computer score a goal here, but uh, I just got too bored with it. All right, well, there you have it. There's some Super Nintendo Protos. Maybe I'll do some more in the future if I can find some more. If you know of any Protos I should play, let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, everybody.